Oh, I see it. Okay. So young of year is Yoy. We call them Yoy. We're looking to see whether there are more than one spawning population within what we are determining as a genetic cluster. Do you see it? I'm right above a rock. I found five genetic clusters, but if you look at the system more closely, perhaps there's more structure there than you see on the landscape level. So what I suspect is that the different locations for spawning might be different populations that are spawning. Well, there's two, there were like five. Well, now I only see one. I'll come around this way, maybe it'll scare it into you a little bit. To test that, what I'm doing is going out to different locations along the river and then collecting young of the year that have hatched out at that site. Fish tend to school together, so you can actually very easily get a scoop full of 30 fish. But those are not good for genetics because it could be one family that you're scooping up, and then you would bias your genetics. The way we are sampling is to go to one location like that where there's a lot of fish, but only take one from that location. And then we move down stream to a totally separate location away from that one and get one fish from that location. So yes, it's very difficult to get the numbers that we need to do the genetic work because of the way the sampling is set up to avoid the bias of getting siblings in your sample. Just because adult fish are together doesn't mean that they're sharing genes. It doesn't mean that the adults are spawning together. They might be from multiple populations that are just feeding in the same location and overwintering in the same location, but not necessarily spawning at the same locations. Yeah! Woo! You got it! Sweet! Looking at those young of the year, if there's no genetic differentiation between these locations with the young of the year, then we know that this watershed is just one big spawning population. Cool. <laughs> a big fish winner today. <laughs> if climate change is causing these dry zones to occur, they might block off the more risky venturing fish. So the ones that go far have a greater likelihood of getting trapped by a dry zone coming back to overwinter. If those fish are weeded out of the population by natural selection, what you end up with is fish that tend not to migrate so much and more isolation of populations. That then has implications for the whole metapopulation because the fish that are going to exchange genes with other populations in other watersheds are the ones that are going to be the travelers, the ones that are going to travel far to spawn.